What is up everybody? Welcome to the Game Night YouTube channel. In today's video, guys, I am doing a playthrough of Crypt Crawler. This is my very own Mint Tin Dungeon Crawler game that I've been working on. And uh, yeah, you guys have given some amazing feedback. I put out a video just a day or two ago uh, showing you guys kind of how to play the game. It was a tutorial video and uh, there was also a link to the Tabletop Simulator uh, game, which is right here on the screen right now. And yeah, a bunch of you guys have checked out the game, have play tested it and given me your feedback and suggestions. And it's been amazing guys. It's been really, really cool reading through all of that stuff. And, uh, you've had a lot of questions, um, maybe some things that I didn't make perfectly clear in that tutorial video or things that I might've forgot to mention. So hopefully I can clear up some of the confusion in this video by showing you a playthrough of the game and taking you through in real time. So that should that should help. That should help clarify some things. So we're gonna hop right into it, guys. Um, let's see, who do we wanna play as? So I think I'm gonna be a human. We're gonna go ahead and play as the human and let's see what class we wanna be. We could be a warrior, could be a wizard, could be a ranger or a cleric. I think for this playthrough, I'm gonna keep it Basic. I'm gonna go with a warrior. Oops. I just picked up <laughs> Just picked up these from over here. Let's plop those back over there. Yeah, so we're gonna be a human Warrior in this playthrough. So we're going to have let's see 17 health Put that right there. He's gonna start with 10 Stamina, so we'll put that up that way and we're gonna start with one oil of course you always start with one oil and There we go. So we've got zero toughness. We have one strength We've got a speed of four and our maximum fear level can go up to eight before we get too scared and go insane down in the dungeon. So there we go, guys. Um, and then we are the warrior over here. So we've got our three warrior skills, fury, adrenaline rush, and blood lust. We're going to go ahead and get the dungeon deck shuffled up. We'll get the bag of uh, soul shards or soul crystals rather shuffled up. And here we go. We're going to grab a map tile. Place it over this way. We'll drop the key into the room and set up our pawn over this way. And here we go, guys. We're going to head into level one of the dungeon in Crypt Crawler. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one movement and we're going to move into the first room, which is a green room. We'll flip the dungeon card to the resolution side. And as you can see here, we have a zombie. So we've got the green circle. We're in a green circle room, so you do the green circle event on the card. Or not event, but the, the the thing next to the green circle at the top, which is one zombie. So, I can either choose to fight the zombie, or I can push my luck and flip another card. In this case, I think I just want to fight the zombie. So, we're going to go ahead and go through the enemy deck over here and find the zombie. And that's who we're going to fight. So, there we go. We've got a zombie right here. We're on level one of the dungeon, so we're going to take one card, flip it over, and let's see what we get. It gets plus one to its toughness. As you can see at the top of the card, it's got the heart, the shield, the orange diamond, and the lightning bolt symbol. Those are the modifiers that are, gonna, that are going to get added to the bottom row of symbols on the card. The heart, the shield, the orange diamond, and the lightning bolt symbol. So he's going to get plus one to his toughness. So he's going to get one right here on his toughness. And he's got a speed of two, as you can see with the lightning bolt. We have a speed of four as the human, so we are going to get to attack first. So we're going to go ahead and roll the dice, and the armor class of the zombie is two. You can see right there in the very center of the card, he's got two. That is his armor class, and we have to roll equal to or higher than to hit. So we did, so now we're going to roll for damage. We've got our club over here that we started the game with, and we rolled a four. And if you roll a four or a five with the club, you deal two damage, plus one from our strength, which is three damage. And then the zombie has one toughness, so that's going to do two damage to him. And then at this point, we can either put two damage on him and he'll have one hit point left, or we can spend up to three stamina. Every time you hit an enemy, you can spend one, two, or three stamina, no more than that though, to deal extra damage. So I'm going to spend one stamina. We're going to inflict one extra damage, which is three, and that is enough to take down the zombie since he has three hit points. So we go ahead and move this over here. We've killed the zombie. He's going to drop one XP, which is denoted by the um, skull. He's going to drop one soul fragment and he's going to drop one gold. So we're going to get one, one, 
and one right here on our tracker. There we go. Cool. All right. So we took down the zombie and that is all that's in that room. He drops no loot. As you can see, there's a little line through the blue diamond symbol. So he doesn't drop any loot. So we'll go ahead and place this card over this way and we can move into the next room. So we'll go ahead and take a step. We'll move into another green room. We'll put a marker here to show that we've cleared that room and we'll flip the next card. We're going into a green room and it's another zombie and there's food and there's an abandoned camp. That's pretty good. Okay, we're definitely gonna go there. This dungeon is crawling with zombies. So we're gonna fight another zombie here. Let's flip this card. Ooh, this is a tough one. So he gets plus two health and plus one toughness. So he's gonna have five health. Let's go ahead and put that right there. And he's gonna get the plus one to his toughness right there. Uh, we're going to get to attack first because our speed is higher. Let's go ahead and roll. We do hit. See how much damage we do. Nice. So we roll the five. So we do two damage plus our one strength is three minus the one toughness is two damage. I think I'm going to just do the two damage and we'll put him down the three. I'm not going to spend any stamina. Now the, um, Zombie will retaliate here. Our armor class is three, as you can see on the center of the card, just below the, the picture there, the artwork. So we're going to go ahead and roll. He needs to roll three or higher to hit us. He does. He hits four, two damage. He rolled a three. You can see if he rolls a one, two, or three, he does two damage. Plus he has one strength, so he actually does three damage, and we have no armor and no toughness. So we take three damage, so we go from 17 down to 14. Okay, it's our turn to attack. Let's see if we hit. We do. We need a two or better. We hit him. See how much damage we're going to do. Again, we do a two. Plus a one is three. Minus his one is two damage. And then I'll spend one stamina to add one extra hit point of damage to do three. And that is enough to take down the zombie. So we've taken down the zombie. And same thing. We're going to get one XP, one soul fragment, and one gold. So we'll go ahead and get one XP, one soul fragment, one gold. And when we reach five, as you can see, uh, we'll unlock the Fury skill for the Warrior, so we need 5 XP to unlock that first skill right there. Okay, so we took down the zombie. Uh, the next thing, there's food in the room, and every time you get a food, it increases your stamina by 1. So our stamina goes back up, and then there's an abandoned camp. Since we're in the green circle room, you can see down the abandoned camp has the green circle symbol next to it, so this event activates. A ring of stones surrounds burnt logs and ashes. A bed of hay lays nearby. A leather bag leans against a stone. So we're going to go ahead and loot this abandoned camp. We're going to roll 1d6. We rolled a 6. We got unbelievably unlucky. We found one food, one oil, and two gold. Let's freaking go, guys. So we get one food. That brings up our stamina. We found an oil, and we found two gold. Dude, that was amazing. That was incredible. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're done with that one. We can place this card here, and we can move deeper into the dungeon. Let's go ahead and move on our footstep tracker. Uh, let's head down this way to head toward the key. We'll put this here since we cleared the room and we're in a yellow triangle room. Let's go ahead and flip the next card. And there's two gold and an ambush. Now, this is funny. So somebody had mentioned in one of the comments that uh, they went into the ambush room and they ended up rolling a six and fought a ghost and died. So that is something that can happen um, at this point in the game. I only have a club, I don't have any armor, I don't have a better weapon, and even though it's very rare that I would roll a 6 and fight a ghost, I don't want to chance it, because if I do have to fight the ghost, I'm probably going to die to it, and then this run will end. So I'm going to push my luck. So this is where the push your luck mechanic comes into play. You can do this once per room that you enter. So we're going to go ahead and flip the next card, and we're going to look at the top left symbol. Oh man, <laughs> this is rough. The top left symbol is a is a purple star, and we have to fight a demon. Oh my god. This might be the end right here, guys. This might be a very fast playthrough. If it does, I'll run another one back, but <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fight this demon. We will get an extra two gold if we manage to defeat him, and there is a noxious gas trap in the room, which is no good. So <laughs> first, we're going to go ahead and fight the demon. That's how you resolve it. You resolve the top half of the card first, and then you do the event if there's an event that you need to resolve. So we're going to fight a demon, and there he is. This is uh, no slouch. This is pretty much the toughest enemy, <laughs> so this is going to be really, really brutal. At least we're on dungeon level one, so he's only going to get one modification card, and he's going to get plus one health, ooh, and plus one strength. Guys, this might be the end. So he's got nine health, 
So I'm gonna put a six right here. I'd like to mention too, um, in the actual physical version of the game, these D6 that you're gonna get in the game, they're tiny, man. They're very, very tiny, and you should be able to fit multiple like on these little symbols. So that should be good if that was something you were worried about. So he's got nine health. He's got four strength. And uh, yeah, he's got five speed, so he is going to attack first since we only have four speed. If the enemy speed is equal to or higher than the player's speed, the enemy attacks first. So he's going to go ahead and attack. He needs to roll three or better to hit us. He misses, thankfully. His armor class is four, as you can see right there in the middle of the card. So we need four or better to hit him. Fingers crossed. Boom, we got him, dudes. Okay, let's see how much damage we're going to do. Need something good. Ooh. So we're going to do one. Plus our one strength is two, minus his one toughness is one. And I'm going to add three more damage to that and go down to seven here on the tracker. So we're going to do four damage to him. Put his health down to five. So we took almost almost half his health right there. Pretty good. He's going to retaliate. He hits us. He does hit. For how much? Four. So if he rolls a four or five, he does three damage plus four strength. So he does seven damage damage to us guys so we go down from 14 to 7 it's not looking good we get to retaliate here we need to hit we don't the demon attacks he hits four seven and we're dead <laughs> we are dead so there you go that's a perfect example of how pushing your luck uh can turn out super super gnarly early in the game or at any point in the game honestly that's about as unlucky as you can get that's unfortunate that was super super unlucky right there so we're gonna run it back oh we're gonna run back another instance of the game let's go ahead and load this up okay and there we go go like this okay cool so we're gonna go ahead and run that back guys that was uh that was too quick so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna play as a human and we're gonna be a warrior let's go ahead and set this up we're gonna get 17 health just like this and we're going to get um 10 stamina Bloop, like that and we'll get one oil. Okay, cool. Here we go. Let's try that again. That was an anomaly. That was an anomaly. So let's go ahead and try it again. It can happen, though. You know, it can happen. So we're going to go ahead and set up our first dungeon map. This is a bigger, one of the bigger ones. It has, uh, looks like it has seven rooms to venture into. It's pretty good. There we go. And we're going to move one step into the first room. And it is a green room. Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, so we've got this one again. Okay, crazy. So we've got the zombie, the food, and the abandoned camp. We're going to go ahead and resolve that card. I definitely don't want to push my luck out of that one. This is a pretty good one to get. And he is going to get plus one toughness and plus one strength. So we're going to put a one right here on his toughness. And we'll put a two on his strength. We're going to attack first since we have four speed to his two. We need a two or better. We didn't get it. We're getting super unlucky, dudes. He does hit us. Four, so it's going to be three damage plus two is five. So we're actually going to go down to 12 already. Man, we're getting walloped on, guys. <laughs> we're getting beat up in these games. Okay, we do hit the zombie. See how much four. So two is going to be one plus one is two. Oh, and he's got three health. Let me go ahead and put that on there. Minus is one toughness. So that's one damage. So I'm going to spend two stamina to bump that up to three damage to kill the zombie. There we go. So we take the zombie down. We're going to get one XP, one soul fragment, and one gold. So we'll get the one fragment, the one XP, the one gold. And we're going to get a food. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. We're going to get our stamina back up. And there's an abandoned camp. So a ring of stone surrounds burnt logs and ashes. A bed of hay lays nearby, and a leather bag leans against a stone. So let's go ahead and rummage through that leather bag, see what we can find. Dude, we rolled six again. Plus one food, plus one oil, plus two gold. That is insanely lucky. Okay, so we're going to get that. We're going to get another oil, and we're going to get plus two gold. That's crazy. Back to back in both both runs. Cool stuff. Okay, so we're done with that room. We're going to go ahead and move up one on the tracker. I think I want to go up and around this way. So we're going to put a token in here to show that we've cleared this room. We're going to go into a yellow room, and we found oil that is incredible dude we got oil for days we do not need to worry about roaming around in the dark in this run that is for sure we're gonna go ahead and move into the next room this is a green circle room right here what do we got a common loot okay there we go guys our luck is turning around we got a six common loot that is the health potion so let's go ahead and grab out the health potion kind of wish i would have got some gear right there but getting a health potion is good 
Um, you can roll 1d6 and you heal that much HP whenever you drink the health potion. So we're going to go ahead and hang on to that. We did take a little bit of damage from that zombie, but remember, you can never go above your maximum health. And same thing for your stamina. In this case, the human has a max of 10 stamina, but if you were a different character, say you were the lizard folk, you couldn't go above 8 for your stamina. So that's something to note. And same for your health. All right, um, so we got our common loot in the form of the potion, and we're going to move further into level one of the dungeon. Let's head over this way to the key room. We are going to pick up the key, and we're in a red room. Let's see what we get. There is an ooze and a rat, and there is also a shrine in this room, as you can see up in the top right corner. I think I want to do this. Yeah, I think I want to do it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to fight the ooze. So the way it works, if you ever run into a room that has multiple enemies, you fight them in the order that they are listed on the card one at a time. You do not fight them simultaneously. So the ooze is going to get, let's see what he's going to get. We're on level one of the dungeon, so he's going to get one modifier card. He's getting one health and one speed. So he's going to have three health and his speed is going to go up to four. So his speed actually matches ours, which means that he is going to attack first. So that little speed boost actually helped out the enemy there. So let's see what he's going to do. He needs a three or better. He hit us. It'd be nice if they could miss for once. And he rolls five. So he's going to do one P, which is one poison damage. And in this instance, the ooze has zero strength. As you could see, his orange diamond symbol, his strength is at zero. If this was another value, let's just say, for instance, it was one. He would, you would not add that to the poison damage. Like he rolled a five, so he's doing one poison. He wouldn't do two poison if he had a strength. He would do one poison and one normal damage to your health, unless you mitigate it by your toughness or armor. So it doesn't add to the, the type of damage that they're doing. It's two separate types of damage. So that's something I didn't clarify in the original tutorial video. Um, and I wanted to make sure to make a note of it here for you guys, because someone did ask about that. And that was my fault for not mentioning that. So, um, so he's going to do one poison damage to us. There we go. And of course, if you ever reach 10 poison, you lose the game. It's something I'm thinking about tweaking because I've play tested the game a lot and I've never lost to poison. So I'm thinking some of these values might need to be increased. Something that I can change as we, you know, we're going through this beta and play testing the game. Uh, so there we go. I get one poison on me. Don't take any other type of damage. It's my turn to attack. We need to roll a two or better to hit him since his armor class is two. As you can see right in the middle of the card, we roll a six. Plenty enough. See what we do. Five, so we're going to do two. Plus our one strength is three damage. He's got no toughness, so that is enough to take down the ooze. He gives us one XP, one soul fragment, one gold, and a common loot. This guy dishes out the reward, so we're going to grab one of each of these things, and we're going to get a common loot. Don't roll a six. We roll a five. That is the buckler. Let's go ahead and grab the buckler. That's amazing. Another thing I should mention too, guys, um... I forgot to do this when I made these cards. I'll, I'll do this soon enough and then update the uh, update the, the mod here. These cards, these uh, weapons and these armor cards need to show how many hands it takes to hold them. So, for instance, like if you had the short bow or the long bow, you couldn't hold a buckler, right? Or you couldn't hold, you know, uh, you couldn't hold the shield. Um, if you have the, the war hammer, which is a two-handed weapon... You couldn't hold the buckler or the shield. So that's something that I have to put in. Same with the armors. Like if you're wearing the tunic and you pick up the chain mail or the plate mail, you can't equip both of them at the same time. I'm going to have to put that, at, you know, that's a body armor. So I'm going to put that stuff in the game. But uh, yeah, I wanted to clarify that here too, since that's something that's missing. So uh, we do have the buckler. Um, it does, uh, it has two durability and it grants us two toughness, which is amazing. So we're going to go ahead and grab a dice from over here and put it right there. So we've got two durability and uh, yeah, so we took down the ooze, picked up some loot, good stuff. And now we need to fight the rats. Let's go ahead and pull out the rat enemy. There he is. We're going to go ahead and flip a card for his modifications. He's going to get one to his health and one to his speed. So he's going to go up to two and then he's going to have six speed and he is going to attack first since he is faster than us. So he rolls. He needs three or better. He misses. Finally. Let's go, dudes. We finally dodged an attack. We attack. We roll a two. And his armor class is two. So we hit. See how much damage we do. We do one. Plus our one is two damage. That is enough to take down the rat. So the rat is dead. 
and we get one XP and one soul fragment. So we're going to get one XP, one soul fragment. There we go. And then that is it for that room. There is that shrine in the room, but unfortunately we don't have five soul fragments to combine into a soul crystal. So we just have to move on. But we did pick up some XP, did pick up some soul fragments, and uh, we got some loot, which is cool too. So we're going to go deeper into the dungeon here. Let's go ahead and move up our step meter onto the five right there. We're going to step into this red room, place our clear counter there, flip, and we found two gold, which is incredible. So there are bad things that can happen in the red rooms, but there's also some good things that can happen in the red rooms. And remember, if there's something really gnarly, something really bad in a, in a room, you can always push your luck once to try to get something more favorable. But in this case, we found two gold laying on the ground in this room. So we're going to go ahead and scoop that up, toss that in our pocket. And we're going to move deeper in. So let's go ahead and move the step counter up onto the six. And I think I want to explore this whole level while we're on level one, since enemies only get one card that will modify their stats. So I'm actually going to head this way before heading out. We're going to put this here. We're going to move into a yellow triangle room. Ooh, there is a shop in this room and there's a spider and a food. I think I want to do it. So we're going to go ahead and fight the spider. Let's go ahead and flip a card for him. He's going to get plus one strength and plus one speed. That uh, speed is not going to matter. He already has eight speed. He's already super, super fast. So he's going to attack first. Let's see what he gets. He does hit. What does he hit for? A one. So he's going to do one damage plus his two strength is three damage. And our buckler mitigates two. So we're going to take one damage and that's going to lower the durability of our buckler by one. We only take one damage instead of three. So our buckler is already paying off. It's good stuff. We are going to retaliate. He's got an armor class of two. So we need two or better. We got it. Let's see how much damage we do. So we're going to do one damage. Plus one from our strength is two. And I'm going to spend one stamina and uh, kill the spider since he's got three health. We'll do a total of three damage to him. So we took him down. He gives two XP, two soul fragments, and one gold. So we're going to gain this two XP which unlocks our skill Fury. When an enemy inflicts damage to you, your next attack inflicts plus one damage. And we also gain two soul fragments. So we now have five. So if we find a shrine, we can combine those into a soul crystal and we gain one gold. So let's go ahead and put that one gold up. So we have seven gold, which is amazing because we're about to head into a shop. But before we do, we also pick up one food since we're in that yellow room so we're going to gain stamina again, and we're back to full stamina. Again, pretty lucky with that. Uh, and as you can see, there's the dollar sign up in the top right. So that means that we can go to the shop. We're in a yellow room, so we have access to the yellow flags and below. So we have the middle shelf and the bottom shelf that we can access. Now keep in mind, you can only buy one of these items uh, per per shop. So like you could buy as many items as you want, but you can only buy one of each, I should say. So you can't keep buying health potions over and over and over again. You can only buy one of each item that you have access to. So um, I want to buy the health potion on the yellow shelf for plus two. So we're going to spend two gold and I'm going to get plus two health. I also want to buy the health potion on the green bottom shelf. So one gold for plus one health. So spend one gold plus one health. And I think I also want to buy that poison potion down on the bottom shelf. I'm going to spend two gold and I'm going to cure one of my poison to go back down to zero. And that is it. I don't want to buy anything else. So cool. That was a good shop. Good use of our gold right there. So now we're going to move on deeper into level one. Let's go ahead and move up our movement tracker. We'll move into the last room, put a clear counter here. And this is a green circle room. So let's go ahead and flip. There is a rat in here. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and fight. I don't want to push my luck into something gnarly. So we're going to go ahead and fight. Let me Put this card over that way. Let's see what modifications he gets. He gets plus one health. This is going to be a very, very easy fight right here. So the rat gets two health total. He is a little bit faster than us. Let's see if he hits. He needs a three or better. He does hit for one damage. And we have the buckler to mitigate it. Unfortunately, that does break the buckler. If you, have, if you ever have armor and you take damage, you have to take the damage to the armor. You can't choose not to. At least that's how I have it right now. That is subject to change. But that is the current rule. So the buckler is broken. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back over here in the loot deck to be found once again. And we take no damage from that attack. So now we're going to attack. We roll. And we roll a four. That is a hit. 
And let's see how much damage we do. We're going to do one plus our one is two damage. And that's enough to take down the rat. And he's going to give us one XP and one soul fragment. So we go up to six on each of those on our tracker right there. And that is it. That is the end of that room. And it's also the end of level one of the dungeon. We're going to spend one last movement to move out here. And we have the key to unlock the door at the end. And we'll move out of the level. So there we go, guys. That was level one of the dungeon. Doing better than the last game. Doing better than the first one that we tried. Um, yeah, that demon was insane. That was very unlucky. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over. Toss it back over this way. Grab the next card in the dungeon deck. Lay it down. We'll put our key in the key room. And we'll set up our pawn up this way at the stairs. And we are ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and move one into this first room of the dungeon of level two. Set that to two. And it is a green room. So let's go ahead and draw this card. There is a goblin in the room. I think we're going to go ahead and fight it. Don't want to push my luck into anything worse. Uh, let's see. He's going to stack. There we go. So we're going to fight a goblin. So now that we're in um, the second floor of the dungeon, the enemies are going to get two cards that will modify their stats. So we're going to flip one. We'll set this card aside. Let's flip the deck over. Move it back over this way. Give it a shuffle. And we're going to get that second card. There we go. So he's going to get two health, one toughness, and one speed. So he's got a total of four health. He's going to get plus one to his toughness, so he's got two. And his speed is going to go up to three. So fortunately, we have four speed, so we are faster still. So we're going to attack first. We rolled a two. He's got an armor class of three, so we actually missed. He's going to attack. He rolls a two, so he misses. We attack. We hit. Let's see for how much damage. He's got two toughness, which is pretty brutal. We rolled a five, so we're doing two plus our one is three. Minus his two is one damage. And remember, we can spend up to three stamina. So we're going to go one, two, three. And we're going to bring our damage up to four and one shot the goblin. That was pretty good. Even with his two toughness, we were still able to take him down because we've got plenty of stamina for that extra damage. So we took down the goblin. He's going to give us two XP, two soul fragments, and one gold. So let's gain our two fragments, our two XP, and our one gold right there just like that. Cool. So that was the goblin in that room. That is it for that first room of the dungeon. We're going to go ahead and take another step. We've taken 10 steps, so that is going to burn one oil. We'll move into this second room, put the clear token in that room, and let's flip. And we're in a green room, and we found oil and a well and a shrine. Let's go. It's incredible. So we found oil. Bloop. We got a lot of oil this run, dudes. We're getting really, really lucky with the oil. And we found a well. A cobblestone well sits in the center of this room. What could be down there? Let's go ahead and roll and find out. What do we get? We rolled a five plus one gold. So we find a gold piece down at the bottom of the well. Nice. Don't mind if I do. And then we've got the shrine in the room. So we're going to spend five of our fragments. We're going to combine the fragments together at the shrine. And we're going to go down to three. We have three left. And that is going to form one soul crystal. So let's go ahead and shuffle up the soul crystal pouch. Draw one out at random, and we got the Emerald Soul Crystal right there. So two more to go, and that will spawn a boss. All right, guys, let's move deeper in. We're going to take one footstep here. We'll move into this next room, put a clear counter, and we're moving into a red room. Let's see what we get. So there's a mage and a skeleton. No way. I do not want to fight a mage and a skeleton. I think I'm going to skip that. So let's go ahead and push our luck into... An orc and a goblin. So if you look up in the top left, we got the red diamond. So we have to fight the orc and a goblin. That's a little bit better. That is a little bit easier. I'm not going to lie. So let's go ahead and flip this over. The orc is pretty tough, though. He's got that two toughness to start with. We're on level two. This could be brutal, guys. Let's see what he gets. He gets one, two. Oh, no. He's going to get a toughness. So he's getting plus two health. So he's got seven health. This is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. He gets that plus one toughness. So he's got three toughness and he gets plus one strength. So he's got two. Oh my gosh, dude. This is a tough orc right here. He's got five speed. So he is faster. He's going to attack first. This is going to be crazy. He misses. We need to roll three or better because he's got that armor class of three. Let's see what we get. We hit him. Ooh, dude. So we rolled three plus one is four. Yikes. But he's got that three. So we actually only do one 
Let's spend three stamina and go down to four. So we're going to do four damage to him. So he's going to be down to three hit points. There we go. We're spending a lot of stamina on these guys here. He's going to retaliate, dude. He does hit. How much does he hit for? So for two plus two is four damage. So we go down to ten. I'm going to go ahead and use my potion. See what we get. Yes, dude, we rolled a five. So we gained five HP. We are back up to 15, and we could put our potion over this way. We get to retaliate here. Come on, dudes. Oh, no, we missed. He attacks. He hits. Four, three, plus two is five damage. We just lost all the health we just gained. That activates our fury, so hopefully we can hit him here. But we don't. He attacks. He hits. Uh-oh, this is not looking good, dudes. Oh, my God. He hits for six damage. We're down to four. We're about to die to this orc on level two. We attack. We hit. See what we roll. Oh, so we're doing one plus one from our strength plus one from our fury is three. And then we're going to spend three more for a total of six damage. Minus is three toughness is three. So that is enough to kill the orc. But dudes, we are beaten and battered right now. We're barely hanging on. He's going to give us three XP. Two fragments, two gold, and a common loot. Hopefully we can roll a six to pick up another health potion. So we're going to gain three and move up to 11 XP. That unlocks our adrenaline rush ability. Once per battle, you may spend stamina to inflict two damage per stamina spent up to a maximum of two. So normally you can spend up to three stamina to deal one, uh, one damage per stamina spent. But when you do adrenaline rush, you can spend up to a maximum of two, but each one stamina you spend inflicts two damage per stamina spent instead of one. Then we're also going to gain two soul fragments. Let's go ahead and put that right there. We're going to gain two gold. And we're going to get that common loot. Come on, dude. Give us a six, please. Oh, we got a four. What is it? What is it? It's a tunic. Okay, it's something. It's a little bit of armor. So that's going to give us one toughness. And it's going to uh, last for three hits. It's got three durability. So let's go ahead and plop that down right there. Cool stuff. Really needed that potion, though. That would have been good. But it is what it is. Um, and that is it for the orc. Now we have to fight a goblin. So let's go ahead and flip this card over. And we're going to fight a goblin next. Let's see what his modifications are here. Let me grab that one and put it down here. Okay, so this is a, a, actually pretty good. Um, he's only gaining two health, as you can see. None of the other ones give him anything. So he's gaining two health. We needed that. So he's at four health, just like that. We are faster. We get to attack first. Let's see what we get. A five, and he's got three armor class. So we do hit. Let's see how much damage we're going to do. A one. So we're going to do one plus one is two. Minus his one toughness is one damage. And I guess I'm going to use adrenaline rush and spend one to do two extra damage. So we're actually doing three. So he's down to one hit point. Yikes, dudes. Okay, hopefully he doesn't take us out. He's going to go ahead and roll. He hits for two damage, and we've got that tunic mitigating one of it. So we're actually going to take one damage. So lower the durability. We go down to three health. Man, we're getting so low. Here we go. We're going to attack. We hit four, one, plus one, plus one from our fury is three damage. Minus is one toughness is two. That is enough to kill the goblin. Whew, that was close. So we get two XP. I'm going to go up to 13. We're getting a lot of experience points. We get two soul fragments and one gold. Go ahead and grab that two soul fragments and the one gold just like that. And that is it for that room. That was pretty brutal, guys. That was a tough, tough fight right there. All right. Let's go ahead and take another step into the next room. We're going to go up into this room to grab the key. Oops, not the whole map card, just the key. There we go. And we're in a green room. So let's go ahead and flip. There we go. One gold and one food. That is more like it. So we scoop up the gold and we get that food that we desperately need to gain some stamina. And we're going to take another step into... Do I want to go up and explore? We got a lot of oil, so I think I do. I think I want to explore while we're on a lower level of the dungeon. So we're going to go ahead and go up into this yellow room. And we found a common loot. There's also a net trap, which will make us potentially lose stamina. We're already really low on stamina, but you know what? I think I want the common loot, honestly. So we're going to do it. We're going to go ahead and resolve this room. Let's see what the loot is. Give me a six. It's a three. So we're going to pick up 
the short bow. Let's go, dudes. There we go. So we got a better weapon. That's better than the club. So we got something that can deal, deal some more damage. And then a net shoots up toward the ceiling, suspended by a rope and pulley. Let's see if we get scooped up in the net here. Oh, we do, and we lose one stamina. So there went the stamina from the food that we just got. But it is what it is. We had to struggle to free ourselves from the net trap. So it used up a little bit of our stamina there. It is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and take another step. Move into the next room. Go into this green room up here. And let's see what the green is. There's a rat, a gold, and a shrine. Let's go, dudes. We're definitely going in here. So let's go ahead and fight the rat. Right there, he's going to get two modification cards. Let's see what he gets. So his modifiers are, dude, two strength. Plus two strength and plus one speed. So he's got two strength. And his speed is going to go up to six. And he was already faster to begin with. So he is going to attack. See what he rolls. He needs three or better. He hits us. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, dude. No. Are you serious? So he's going to do three plus two is five minus our one from our tunic is four and he kills us dude no he got killed by a rat in a shrine room i thought for sure we were about to get another soul crystal dang dude rip there it is guys so hey hopefully that clears up some of the confusion pretty much covered most of the things that i might have left out in the other video so you guys can see uh exactly how the game plays hopefully that helps kind of show you the sequence of events and uh, yeah, clarifies some of the rules for you guys. So there it is, dudes. Um, I'll definitely be doing some more playthroughs of the game. Um, and hopefully we can get a little bit further. And you can see some other items and whatnot from the loot deck. And some more uh, enemies and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, there it is, guys. Hey, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. Let me know your feedback and any questions that you have. If anything still isn't clear, um, yeah, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. So anyways, guys, if you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up like button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the red subscribe button and click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. And look forward to more playthrough videos of Crypt Crawler coming very, very soon. Thank you guys so much for all the positive feedback, all your questions and everything. It's been Super cool to read through all that stuff, and it's been very, very helpful indeed. So thank you guys so much. And hey, until the next one, guys, have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video.